Enjoy the show. <laughs> Are you hungering for something new this year? HelloFresh has got your back with pre-measured ingredients and easy to follow directions. Your new favorite meal can be prepped in under 30 minutes. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping when you use the code footballers14 at hellofresh.com slash footballers14. Fuck clan, you know what you want? Because I know what you want. It is football, and football. Not, not just a game or two. You want all of them live. Maybe you can't get direct TV where you live. Not a problem anymore. NFL Sunday Ticket TV. It lets you follow your favorite team no matter where you live. Watch every out of market NFL game every Sunday afternoon live on your favorite devices. The Direct TV Red Zone Channel, Direct TV Fantasy Zone. Look, with NFL Sunday Ticket TV Max and University Premium Packages, you're going to watch all the football that you possibly can consume on a Sunday morning and afternoon. The player tracker, well, you're already tracking the players. Well, they're going to handle it. Follow 20 of your favorite players every Sunday with your NFL Sunday Ticket app. Go online to NFL Sunday TV slash Sunday Ready now to see if you're eligible. And pro tip, use promo code BALLERS2021 at checkout, and you're going to save 15%. Again, to see if you're eligible for the NFL Sunday Ticket streaming streaming package, go to nflsundayticket.tv slash sundayready and use code BALLERS2021 to save 15% when you sign up. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! oh my goodness welcome in i was gonna give you it's money time oh were you but i went too long yeah thanks for stealing my thunder <laughs> andrew holloway so selfish oh welcome into the show <laughs> just what a, an what, ordinary friday morning what a game what a night Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. I mean, I think I could literally make the joke, I don't know what happened last night, in a way. <laughs> yeah, why don't you tell the people what did happen? Because I know a lot of people follow us on social media. They're excited for the show. They're like, I can't wait to hear it. But many, many people out there, I would call them wonderful idiots that aren't following us on social media, but I still love you, uh, <laughs> might be unaware of what just happened. Uh, of what you did I, last night. I, I, I still in complete shock and disbelief. Um, there's so much to the story, but the the headline is, is somehow, someway, on the heels of Mike's tremendously sad, I lost $40,000 <laughs> story. Cool. Why, why are we bringing that back up? Um, I entered the DraftKings Millie Maker for Thursday night. The showdown. And uh, we are brand new to the DFS world where we can participate in these and I, I genuinely, and, and Brooks, you know this, about 30 minutes before we left the office yesterday, I told Jason, I said, I love these Thursday night Millie Makers. They're really fun. Gives you something to do. Um, you can track all of the action easily. You're following along. Yeah, I mean, you're watching one game, right? Mm -hmm. Like sometime, And we're so used to nine games on Sunday. So oh, We both made a lineup. Yeah, I'm like, Jason, these are fun. We should do it. You're like, oh, you yes. Made a lineup I did. <laughs> oh, I cashed, man. I, I, I did. My lineup did very well. I cashed. I think I got... Uh, 30 bucks. <laughs> I won. You sure did. <laughs> oh, man. First <laughs> place. Money, money, yeah. Money, money, money. I somehow won on two lineups. And, uh, I mean, I, I'm just shocked. Um, my wife was giving me such a hard time for even participating in any of this. Uh, and it somehow yeah. this. How's that feel? Uh, <laughs> somehow that didn't get redeemed with the victory. But um, I won first place and uh, forty six thousand dollars. We've had Ooh, three. Baby. We've had three weeks. Arizona it took us three weeks to take one down. Let's uh, go. And so, a couple headlines here. First of all, I'll say this publicly so I, that I follow through with it. But if it weren't for Jason, I'm not sure I, I take down the Millie Maker because oh. because so I'm giving him one sixth of my winnings. Ooh, all right, <laughs> let's uh, go. Because. We're we're leaving. Yeah, but like, I was like, "Hey, Andy." No, you left early. You, love draft you games. left early yesterday, Mike. Shoot, <laughs> jokes on you. You would have had the same lineup. 
But no, what was funny is, uh, you know, these these Thursday night contests, you have a captain, and that you, that player gets 1.5 mm-hmm. times their normal points, and then you have five flex players. And so my lineup was uh, Sam Darnold as my captain. DJ Moore had a great game. Brandon Cooks had a great game. Then I went with Davis Mills. Like, not a lot of people went with Davis Mills, the other mm-hmm. quarterback. A lot of... A lot of people went with the Panthers D, which I understand. Uh, and then Anthony Miller's sitting there at $1,000. I put him in, and I got one spot left, and I'm kind of looking. We're walking out the door, and I'm going, man, what's this spot? Is it Jordan Akins for a couple thousand? Is it Terrace Marshall for a couple thousand? And then Chuba Hubbard's sitting there, and Jason's like, oh, you're building a non-CMC lineup already. Why not throw Hubbard in? And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. He goes, what if CMC gets hurt? Oh, uh, mm. uh, so I I realized that this uh, is not a good night for everybody. Yeah. But the second headline here, guys, I'm the same person that you know and love. I just because I took down the Millie Maker, you have been incredibly the, humble. We I'm showed the up. Same person. We hey, showed I, up. To I lattes. hate to interrupt, guys, but oh, Al, a- Andy had a rush delivery that just showed up. He said oh, it's really? important. Okay. Oh. Anyways, no. I'm the same guy. <laughs> Got a new hat. <laughs> I'm the same guy I've always been, and I just want you to know that. I'm, I'm quite, stay, quite the fancy hat. I'm going to oh, stay, well. stay humble. Money, 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 money. Oh, boy. We do have a jam-packed, wild and crazy show that I will wear this hat for the remainder of, um, including our, our, uh, our DraftKings segment at the end of the show, which means one of us mm. is spinning the wheel of shame. Yeah, that's me. It's Mike. It's yeah, not me. It's me. And so uh, no chicken mass for me today. We have nine more matchups in the fantasy forecast. Let's uh, let's briefly hit last night's game. Well, the Beyond big, me winning. The big news here is obviously Christian McCaffrey. The injury is devastating. And, and uh, you know, uh, in the league of record, I have CMC, so I am with the people out there that spent that first round pick it is devastating it is just horrendous and I'll, i i know the 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 scars and the feelings of you know you want to label yep. it you want to say he's injury prone he let you down last year and we don't have um follow up mri data yet to know how severe it is but if you follow some of the clues of what happened when it was in the game the importance of christian mccaffrey there how quickly he was ruled out along with him calling himself immediately off the field you have to presume it's going to be a multi-week injury, not just a little, you know, it's a little tight. Um, I don't think this is going to be an Austin Eckler situation. I think this is going to be something that sidelines him for a while. I expect that we will get news in a couple of days as to whether or not he goes on the IR. And that'll be that three-week timeline. So we'll know if we think he's just going to miss two weeks or if he goes on the IR, we'll know he has to miss at least three. And so that's going to be you know we'll talk about this a lot on Tuesday's waiver show but uh, Chuba Hubbard will obviously be a very very yep. important pickup and and I I see Andy smiling over here because look the rich get richer um in in our league of record <laughs> I am playing against Andy and I have Christian McCaffrey had and he picked up Chuba before the week, you you he, rascally dog. He was never not working, man. Yeah. Uh, and he, uh, DJ Moore is great. I mean, the breakout continues DJ for DJ Moore, Moore. Is fantastic. Twelve targets. Oh, it was holy amazing. Schnikes. He was and Darnold just <laughs> missed him. Did they catch your holy Schnikes yeah, in there. Yeah, you did. And and Darnold just missed him late in the game on a uh, on a deep shot that would have housed, but unfortunately overthrew it by about half a yard. Uh. What do we do here with Robbie Anderson? So what's what's interesting here? Besides crying, because we've established that crying is fully allowed and encouraged in, in fantasy, fantasy football. football. Yeah. So, sometimes very necessary. Robbie finished one for eight um, with, on only two targets. So it's it's disconcerting uh, for sure. Um, I do question, obviously, if CMC misses time. In this game, it's different, right? It's, it's very different when a player... Um, gets injured mid-game versus you know you're without a player and you're installing a new game plan. Andy, you brought up Christian McCaffrey as a big reason to worry about Robbie Anderson coming into the season. That, that he's the primary target. Do you think the role changes for Not the weeks really. that he's out? Not really. I don't. And I think a lot of this has to do with Sam Darnold and the game plan and the way that he has eyes for DJ Moore and the way that they're drawing up 
these uh, these plays for him. He gets out of the pocket. He rolls left. DJ Moore is this crosser. That's not what Robbie's doing right now. And I mean, you stare at three weeks into the season, and you've got better fantasy production from the Dan Arnolds and the Alex Ericsons and Tommy Trimbles Oof. in the lineup last night. You know, it could be better for him without all of the targets. But Chuba will get targets. That's some Chuba wasn't there last year. Right, like the the yeah. I mean, Mike, Mike Davis, Davis was so yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, it's got to be better than it was last night for Robbie Anderson. He just signed a huge contract, so if you want the counterbalance, it's he's paid to be an integral part of the offense. It just didn't go that way last night. They also were in a game where, like you said, it was disrupted on offense, and they weren't going to be threatened by the Texans' offense. So. I think it gets better. I don't know if I'd go as far as to say I'm buying low on Robbie, but there I, are going to be people out at this point. I think there's a lot of people that want to drop Robbie. They, they say, I, don't do that. And that's I would not drop him if he was on my roster. I would also commend and re remind people uh, not to toot, toot here, but Mike, you said two weeks ago before the Saints game, go trade for DJ Moore. Yeah. Now you called your shot and you said that this game would be big. Hope you got him. Because uh, yeah, you're not going to trade for him anymore, just like you said. Yeah, you was, had to you had to buy him two weeks ago. If you did, uh, thank your local Mike. Yeah, yeah. That, that was buy high, and now it's that was buy high. <laughs> now you are. I don't think you can anymore. And we did. We we said in week one to get rid of Robbie because yeah. it was a one touch. When you get a one catch for 57 and a touchdown, that is a sell chance. Um, you're not going to you're uh, not going to sell him on one for eight last night. Right on the other side of the ball, it's Brandon Cooks and and nothing. Dude, what Brandon Cooks? He's so good. Like, I mean, I was, yeah, I, I got the DJ Moore. I apologize for fading Brandon Cooks because he's been outstanding. Why don't people, <laughs> why don't teams want Brandon Cooks? And meanwhile, he's just, he's dominating. He dominated with General Davis Mills. Like, this guy. You see, do you think this could be like a not on the field problem, like a like a bad body odor issue in the locker room? Oh, man. Mm. He's one of the, he's, he's all natty. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, it doesn't make sense, because, especially when he's gone through teams that have incredible coaches, right? Like, who's good at identifying talent? Would you consider Sean Payton and, like, Bill Belichick? Yes. Yeah. And they, they all shipped him out. So, well, but they all brought him in as well. So you got you to see okay. both sides of it. Um, here's a, a Kyle, the editor uh, extraordinaire, uh, just pointed this out. Among wide receivers uh, younger than 28 years old, uh, Brandon Cooks has more receptions than Calvin Johnson did, more receiving yards than Antonio Brown, and a higher yards per target than Randy Moss. It's he's, crazy. He's so good. All right. Well, yeah. it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. It's Foot Clan Friday. We give something special away, and why not give away a DJ Moore signed yeah, jersey? Yeah, baby. DJ Moore signed jersey from pristineauction.com is going to Josh Dow. Josh Dow, congratulations. You win this week's giveaway. Uh, every you win this single time, Josh. Friday. You win this time, Josh. <laughs> uh, every single week we do this for our supporters over at jointhefoot.com. We appreciate all the support for this independent podcast, and the community over there is incredible. So uh, we like to give something back. Go to pristineauction.com, use code BALLERS, get a $10 credit to check out some of their other gear. We talked about Thursday night. Now let's talk about some news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Now, I didn't, I didn't hear anybody thank me for the uh, the donuts and the coffee. I was trying. On the air. And then your delivery showed up. Yeah, I said you, you, were, you were being humble. You got us lattes, and then... You then right after that, you bust out a gold bling money sign hat. Thanks, Andy. You're welcome, Brooksy. You're welcome. I'll take care of the salaries for a little while. Oh. Um, Brooks, no, Brooks I, I, gets to save a little bit. The money. funny part is you got it from Duncan, and Brooks owns Duncan Donuts. Oh, dang it. Yeah, you have that rolling around in your uh, center console in the car, right? Yes, sir. All in change, though, which yeah. is weird. Um, no, actually. In a uh, currency I've never seen. In a currency <laughs> I've never seen. A Fabergé egg bucks. Um, it's a $100 coin. I didn't know they made those. <laughs> he got access to the, yes. the gold bullion. Um, I, I'll say this. I'm going to tease something. I do have something really special planned as a follow-up to this incredibly good fortune moment. And um, so stay tuned on social media for that. Ooh. Uh, it'll be really cool. News and notes. DeAndre Hopkins hasn't practiced Wednesday or Thursday. We're out here in Arizona. This happened a ton last year. 
I'm not worried yet. He has gone full weeks without practicing and then plays on Sunday. There is no local sign that he's not playing. We're all good there? Yeah, yes. no, no fears on the local radio waves. Any fears for Dalvin Cook not practicing Wednesday, Thursday? I am not currently afraid. Not, not really, especially when you uh, hear Zimmer talk about it. <laughs> Zimmer's going to be like, tough it out. Get out there. We need you. I'd really like to see at least a limited Friday practice from Dalvin because if, if you don't see that, then you have to start preparing. Which means pick up Madison. If you are, if yeah. you have, if you can, I mean, Madison's a highly rostered player already. Sure, but if he is available out there, it might be worth, especially if you're the uh, the Dalvin Cook manager, it might be worth dropping a wide receiver on your bench that maybe you wouldn't usually drop it there in that kind of questionable area to protect yourself. Real quick strategy point, not to rub in the Chuba Hubbard amazing signing that I got two days ago, but because of all the injuries, I mean, we whether it was Mostert or somebody else, like. Is it generally advisable for players of high-profile running backs, at least heading into the weekend, if their backup's out there, to, to insure it for a period of time and then drop them? Yeah, or like, you're, like you have Dalvin Cook on, yeah, so on the Dalvin, weekend, pick up Madison before the game? Right. Like it, 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 you know, Sometimes you take that shot, Mike. You've, you won a championship last year taking some Sunday morning backup shots. It seems like that would have paid off for the Elijah Mitchell situation or Trey yeah. Sermon. It would have, would have paid off with Chuba. Um Hopefully your league has you an know, Tony IR Brooks. spot. We, we always recommend IR spots for, um, you know, if you're making your league. And whenever you have those, you're always going to have, or, or I would say most weeks, you'll have someone ruled out that's on your roster. And that's usually when I, I'll move them to the IR and pick up okay. uh, my backup before the week in anticipation of possible injuries. T. Higgins suited up for today's practice after missing Wednesday and Thursday. The report out of Cincinnati was that he was – on pace to not play. I'm not, I haven't heard it put that way before. Interesting. But now he did suit up for practice, so um, stay tuned. We'll find out. Amari Cooper limited in Thursday's practice. That's a good sign yeah, for Monday night. Go. Yeah. Miles Sanders limited in Thursday's practice. Monday night game probably giving him a little extra time. Yeah. You think I, he'll play? Yes. Yes. Uh, Lamar Jackson, Marquise Brown returned to practice. They'll play. Deontay Johnson did not practice Wednesday, Thursday. How worried are you that Deontay may sit this one out? I lean that he will. Sit uh, it out? Yeah. I mean, it, we're happy that it wasn't a serious injury for Deontay, but, yeah, I mean, he he probably doesn't play. But, okay, let, just the bigger question. If he play, if he gets a limited practice Friday and he plays, is he just right back into the lineup? I think so. Yeah. Odell Beckham, game time decision. He also reported elsewhere that he was going to be out there. Uh, they reported, barring an unforeseen setback, they expect him to make his season debut. Is this – how do you approach this coming off the ACL? Because tons of people – he's drafted everywhere, mm -hmm. rostered, been on IR. You, you you see the name, and maybe you can go throw uh, Sterling Shepard in your lineup or um, even somebody maybe lower tier, you know, A.J. Green or Christian Kirk – or you see Beckham coming off the injury with some risk, right? Like he could go out there, he could be limited. I, you know, what are the range of outcomes, and how how confident would you be to throw him into a flex spot? Yeah, the Jarvis Landry injury makes you a, a little bit more tempted to see what you got right off the bat. But I'm I'm taking the wait and see approach. If I've got a Christian Kirk, a Jacoby Myers, um, uh, you know, Brian Edwards, Emmanuel Sanders, these are guys. AJ Green against Jacksonville or Odell Beckham in Odell this game? Beckham. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to ask the most <laughs> yeah. disgusting question. Brandon Ayuk or Odell Beckham? Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham. AJ Green or Brandon Ayuk? AJ Green. I, may, I may destroy you. No, that's Brandon Ayuk. That's AJ Green. That's AJ Green. I'll take that water bet. For this week? Yeah. Mike, you want that one? Why not? Put it on the board. Water bet. Yeah, you guys are betting 40 grand, right? Yes, hmm. we can't love your money. We yes, can't, we can't <laughs> let Jason keep getting away with these Brandon Ayuk nonsense. Look, you got one sixth of my winnings to, to play around with. <laughs> All right, um, Damian Harris limited Wednesday and Thursday finger finger injury. No concerns there. Nope. Elijah Mitchell. This is a big one. Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 has the has the sun already set? I don't on, on the future for Eli Missile because. If he misses this game and Trey Sermon plays, and then we're what? We're going to be three weeks into the season. You could have Jeff Wilson back by week six. Are you still 
holding out hope that Eli gets some good performances ahead of you? Yeah, you're holding out hope. I mean, it, it, I think the real question, because right now it looks like Elijah Mitchell is trending to not play, and I would believe that based on the amount of signings and running backs they've brought in. When you know, it, it you seemed mean early. All in, of them? Yeah, it seemed <laughs> early in the week that you know, oh, it was just a minor uh, shoulder sting or, or whatever. But when you combine any kind of uh, don't worry about this injury with a hundred signings of the same position. You go, I'm worried about that injury. The real question is whether Trey Sermon passes the concussion protocol that uh, when it comes to Elijah Mitchell's future, because if Trey Sermon comes out and is active without him, then all of a sudden he's got the chance to really steal the show, win the job. And, and my outlook on Elijah Mitchell is very negative. But uh, if Trey Sermon doesn't play, then I think Elijah will be back in the following week. One I, of the go ahead, Mike. I think even if I'll say if Mitchell is out and Trey Sermon comes in, has himself a good game, I would try and steal Elijah Mitchell. Really? From because you think they'll go back to? Him? I think they will. Okay, well that's good to know. I think the most likely outcome for Sunday night, based on the information I have this morning, I think it's more likely that Trey Sermon plays in this game and is the best fantasy producer at running back than it is. Eli Mitchell. I would agree with you, but it's important to remind people it is Sunday night. Yes. So if you don't have a pivot option in the Sunday night or Monday night game, then Sunday morning, if if we don't know already he's passed concussion protocol, uh, you know, which I guess by Sunday morning we should know that information. I don't know. They, but it, they, they don't necessarily release it. But if we don't know that, then plug someone else, you know, uh, James Robinson, who maybe you'd rather play – um, Trey Sermon, if you knew, but I would, I would just take the guaranteed player in my lineup. All right, anybody else that you guys want to highlight before we get into the fantasy forecast? Um, uh, no. By the way, that, that lots of news happening, and you have to pivot quickly if you need more injury updates. There's a reason we have an injury expert, Matthew Betts. He does an injury blitz podcast every Friday afternoon after the practice reports. You can access that at jointhefoot.com. So pay attention there and make sure you subscribe to the breaking news alerts, news alerts <laughs> not channel, <nukes. laughs> not newts, nothing other that sounds like that uh, brought to you by sleeper. Grab the sleeper app. It's well worth it. And before we get into the rest of the matchups, want to thank today's sponsor. Yes, we do. Wealthfront uh, is a longtime sponsor. And look, decades of data show that investors that trade individual stocks underperform the market every year. In fact, only 1% of day traders actually beat the market. Uh, the odds are not in your favor when you're doing it alone, but you could team up with Wealthfront instead because investing can be complicated, but whether you're a beginner or you've been investing for years, Wealthfront makes it very easy. They have the tools for you. Uh, their app is is a delight. It's easy to go through, set your boundaries of what you're looking for, and they create a portfolio for you of globally diversified, low-cost index funds personalized just for you in minutes. There's no manual trades, no picking stocks, no watching the stock market every day. They automatically handle all the investing and uh, do everything for you based on your preferences. And Wealthfront is trusted with over $20 billion of assets. And you can get your first $5,000 managed for free by going to Wealthfront.com slash footballers. To get your first $5,000 Dollars managed for free for life. Go to wealthfront.com slash footballers. That's W E A L T H F R O N T dot com slash footballers to start growing your savings. Go to wealthfront.com slash footballers and get started today. We also want to thank Head and Shoulders for supporting the podcast as they do and have done all year long. Their scalp shield technology never not working. Never not working. That's right. And uh, look, I was never not working when I picked up old Shuba Hubbard yeah. earlier this week. Uh, you should try not working. Uh, <laughs> it would be better for you. Uh, Mike brought up a name that we wanted to bring up yesterday yes. on the Never Not Working segment, which we do every week. It's been very helpful for fantasy players. But like Jameson Crowder is a great stash. Yes, he is. Yeah, you've seen what Braxton Berrios is doing in this slot role, wide, uh, slot wide receiver role for the Jets. Lots it, of targets. It's all the targets. He's, so, a, he's a game time decision. But he would be a stash. Yeah, so we, uh, we we bring it up every week. You want to be never not working, uh, never, ever not working. That's and, right. And Scalp Shield, that works every day, protects you against flakes, get up to 100% dandruff protection. That's never not working with head and shoulders. Scalp Shield technology available at walmart.com. Fantasy Forecast. 
Back into the matchups, the Washington-Buffalo game, the Bears, Browns, Ravens, Lions, Colts, Titans, Chargers, Chiefs, and Saints and Patriots games. We broke them down yesterday. So if you want to hear the player breakdowns, go ahead and click over to that show. But then come back to this one because the uh, fantasy faceoff is going to be very fun later on. Wow. Uh, mm. We're going to start here with the Falcons at the Giants. DK Sportsbook has the Giants minus three. Over under is 47 and a half. These are two winless teams. And uh, right now the Giants are kind of living the Jameis Winston experience where production at the quarterback position is somehow still not translating to victories on the field. But Daniel Jones is Mike's start of the week this week. Hold your nose while what you could do go it. Wrong? Hold your nose while you do it. <laughs> Saquon Barkley, Jason's start of the week. So the 0-2 Giants with a 25-point implied point total and the favorites in this one have a couple of starts of the week. Yeah, there, there's been enough we've seen from the Giants' offense to to believe it. They haven't been great by any means, but Daniel Jones has looked good enough to where at home in a game favorite against the Falcons um, with Dean Pease on the other side of the ball. I He's not going to put out the fire? I don't, I don't think he's going to put out the fire. <laughs> so uh, th this is a game where I think you can uh, start those players. Kenny Galladay is a – a little bit questionable. I'm not sure that the breakout's going to happen if he's dealing with his hip injury. But Sterling Shepard, uh, to me, he's someone that you yes. absolutely should play. He yes. is um, – I, I wouldn't say he's a must start, but he's a should start. In the majority of lineups, he is tied for the most receptions in the NFL right now. The last four games with him and Daniel Jones have been outstanding. Nine receptions, eight receptions, seven receptions, nine receptions. He's a PPR guy and three touchdowns in those four games. So he, he is in my lineup. I see him as a must start at this point. Yeah, he's making me feel a little stupid for doubting him because he's on a great run with Daniel Jones. So uh, that being said, if Galladay plays, I'm very hopeful for Kenny Galladay to have a game as well in this matchup against a, an atrocious Falcons defense. Yeah. However, I, I do think the Falcons are going to win the game. I know I already have my al almost upset of the week, but this is another one where I am taking the Falcons – to kind of turn things around a little bit uh, for the wheels to fall off a little bit for Daniel Jones. And I think it'll be a pretty high scoring game. You guys like the over in this one, the 47 and a half for yeah. both teams. I, I, I do like the, the over. I think Daniel Jones at home is, is, is better. And, and we've seen enough. It's, it's funny. I've never seen an offense look. At, it, I, I can't wrap my head around Atlanta because Atlanta is like, I watch them. I'm like, this offense actually isn't as bad as it looks but it looks horrific so it's like <laughs> what is happening where it's like okay this they're moving the ball Cordero's looking good Mike Davis is fine obviously you're ugly but you got, you're ugly you got you got Pitts who who looked pretty good Calvin Ridley has actually been fine and, but then it's like what but you suck so clarify answer for me what what they, is the Atlanta Falcons offense are they good or are they they're, bad they're dysfunctional and they're bad and Matt Ryan isn't playing up to par. And the, somehow the team has lost its anchor in Julio. And I know that the metrics always showed that Calvin Ridley was good without him. But somehow the, it just feels different. I mean, they have two backup Bears running backs as they're starting running backs, too. <laughs> like, you can say, I mean, these guys have production. But if your offense, the headline for your offense is Mike Davis and Cordero Patterson are effective. Okay. Well, that's, that's a good, that's that's part, a good argument that's for them being bad. Yeah, that I, being said, what are you doing with Mike Davis moving forward? Like, is he a start this week? Yeah. I mean, he. Cordero as well? Uh, Cordero is more of a desperation flex, I suppose. I get it. He scored the two touchdowns, but what, Mike Davis had seven catches yeah. last week? Like, Davis is going to be fine because he's going to see so much work. I, I put the blame more on the offensive scheme that has been installed here for the Atlanta Falcons. Makes uh, sense. For uh, the kind of the disappointing start for Calvin Ridley. I I put it more on that than uh than Julio Jones. Does it get being better? On. Does it get better for Ridley or is this I th it it can. Uh it, does it. Yeah, I I would say it will. Uh as Matt Ryan learns yet another offense. Uh in <laughs> Is that why he always happens. looks progressively more frustrated as a human? Probably. Like Matt Ryan has gone from being he he's looked like the uh boy next door friendly quarterback to at this point in time He's he's challenging Bruce Arians for the reddest face in football. He seems angry all the time. I, mean, I would be too. You're like Matt Ryan is has has been a great quarterback. 
to me. It, it, my opinion of watching him. He won an MVP. Great. Uh, was super close Did to winning. Did he really? Yeah. I forgot that. He, he went to the Super Bowl and won an MVP. Yeah, he 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 took his team at, at halftime up like 20 points or whatever in the Super Bowl. 28 and, to 3. Yeah. Uh, so Sorry, a, great, a great quarterback, but yet he's had to learn an offense every two – a new one every two years. Like, give him some stability. Okay, so oh, we're I mean, starting. Too late now. We're starting Calvin Ridley. Yeah. You're starting Kyle Pitts. He yes, looked, you are. He looked very good. Uh, in, I've been trying to trade for him in week two. I don't blame you. Yeah, he's he's a good target. Um, and you're not starting Matt Ryan. I think I think that's basically yep. all the pieces from this game. Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh. Both teams one and one. DK Sportsbook line Steelers minus three. That is uh, that tells you everything you need you need to know about how the, it's going for the Steelers this year. Home three point favorites against the Bengals. The over under is a mere forty three points. So when you look at what's going on in this game, you have a bunch of options on the Cincinnati side facing a tremendously good defense, or at least has been a good defense. They've had some struggles on the back end. They don't have T.J. Watt, and then you look at a dysfunctional Pittsburgh offense that has struggled as well. And a low over under. So, are you afraid of this matchup? Where wh who are you most confident in? And you know, beyond like Joe Mixon, and you're playing, but beyond him, who are you confident in? Oh man, I'm not confident in this game. Um, I don't think I would throw Joe Burrow out there. We don't know yet the health of T.J. Watt. That makes a huge difference. Yes. Um, but assuming that T.J. Watt is able to be back with the with the team. Uh, for this game, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense is just too good to have confidence in uh, in the passing game of the Bengals. And on the other side, Ben Roethlisberger is just too bad to have confidence in the offense as a whole. We talk about Deontay Johnson being a PPR target machine. That's true. That's great. You're going to get that, you know, 12 to 15 PPR points because he gets enough targets. Um, if he is out, then I have a little bit of confidence in Juju playing that role. Um, the workload of both Najee running. See a bump, yeah, too. I was gonna say the the workload of both running backs is fine. So you're gonna start Joe Mix. You're gonna start Najee Harris, and I think everyone else is like you're just kind of pinching your nose and saying, "I hope Jamar Chase gets a touchdown. I I I hope that uh, Chase Claypool can catch the ball." But I don't want. I'm not like excited for any of these players. So let me ask you this: Sterling Shepard or the this three Shepherd. pack of wide receivers for the Steelers? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it seems dumb to say. I, I, I don't know. Jamar Chase. I'm going to go with Jamar Chase. You saw Henry Ruggs had a big week against Pittsburgh last week. So I think Jamar Chase, if T. Higgins is limited or out, I'm going to go with Jamar. All right. Because I think I want the big play. If T.J. Watt is out, I think that's fine. I think uh, he was out for when Ruggs had that big play. You, you want the time to step back in the pocket and dial one up. It's... Much easier without T.J. Watt there. If no Deontay, Juju could have 12 catches in this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about here? Cincinnati hasn't won in Pittsburgh since 2015. Wow. This is This is a good chance. I, I think they have a legitimate shot of stealing this game. And the only other player I, I want to talk about, I want to talk about him every minute of every oh, day, no. is, is, oh, no. is the Muth. <laughs> Pat Fryer Muth. The Muth is Luth. Um, <laughs> and, and look – I it seemed it's so good. It's, Don't make me take away your one six, brother. It, it seemed you it's a, a verbal contract. Um, <laughs> it it did seem for for all the jokes, it did seem like Pat Fryermuth yes overtook Eric he Ebron did. as the starter. Certainly the future of the team. Yeah. So He's the future. Oh, oh, sweet oh, mercy! Yeah, <laughs> I understand if either of you producers want to walk out. If you need to walk out, that's and Al is leaving. Oh, that was the one. The judge is sticking around, but Al's gone. All right. Well, it was a good run. Cardinals two and zero taking on the zero and two Jacksonville Jaguars. 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 <laughs> Jaguars. Uh, DK Sportsbook line Cardinals minus seven and a half over unders fifty one point five. That gives the Cardinals almost thirty points. That is a lot to go around for Kyler Murray and company. I think the biggest name in Arizona right now is Rondell Moore. People want to play him. They they had him on their bench for a breakout game, and they want to chase the points. We for, we have these conversations every week. You shouldn't chase him. You should chase him. Mm -hmm. We forget that people want to. Like, they want to put the player in their lineup that's fun to watch, that has a big play capability, 
Are you doing it? Are you putting Rondale in against Jacksonville? I am doing it. I have Rondale in. Um, I've, I've got him in one league, and he is currently in my lineup to start. I think that there's a good kind of litmus test in this um, in this matchup of Mar Marvin uh, Jones versus Rondell Moore. Who would you start out of those two guys? I'm I'm leaning towards Rondell Moore for the potential that the Jaguars offense implodes. I don't expect them to implode. Air Arizona showed me last week that they are there's some holes in that defense that showed up that weren't there in week one against the Titans. Sure, when you play against an accurate quarterback. Yeah, but he throws a lot. And and you know, Jason brought this up yesterday. Like Trevor Lawrence in week one for fantasy was not a bad option. Like, he was no. the quarterback 12 in week one. He 332 passing 332 yards. passing yards. However, that was against the Houston Texans. And last week against a, a, a much better defense in Denver. I don't know that the Cardinals are as good on defense as the Broncos, but he only managed 118 passing yards. So it can go south You're for right. Trevor Lawrence. You're right. I, do, I would take Marvin Jones, though. For what it's worth, as big of a, I have both players on on some of my rosters. Marvin's been the number nineteen overall in two straight weeks. Uh, I would take my shot there. Mike, you're on the Rondale side. Yeah, because I, I think that they're both fine plays, but the ceiling is uh, much higher for Rondale. Yeah, I mean, there there's definitely a lot more points to go around in Arizona on the implied. Uh, point totals there. Kyler Murray's always in your lineup. Chase Edmonds is Mike's start of the week. James Conner, I would bench him. He has yeah. been one of the least efficient running backs in all of football. Hopkins do you is great, so you play him. Are you still holding on to James Conner? No. Because I mean, like, you were just talking about, you know, do you stash these insurance running backs? Because if, if Chase Edmonds misses time, James Conner is going to see a massive bump in his workload for a very high-powered offense. Yeah, I mean, if you want to make him an end-of-week ad in a Tuesday morning drop every week, that makes sense. Okay. Um, I don't think he's looked as bad as his numbers <laughs> are, so there's that, and he may get the goal line work, but you're in an offense where you're kind of saying, like, do you want Latavius Murray? Or do you want James Conner? I'd rather have Latavius Murray. I, I I know that that team wants to establish the run and run the ball enough, and he's going to split, whereas um, it, it seems like with James Conner, I'm not convinced that he's going to get a, enough carries to be relevant. And you know Kyler scores around the goal line, right? just like uh, Lamar does. A little bit of an update here. Yes. T. Higgins is going to be listed as doubtful. Not I wasn't guessing that. I oh. <laughs> sorry. I thought you were going to the uh, to the good news. Well, the good news is that Carson Wentz is practicing. Hey, hey now. I was feeling kind of optimistic. I was I was really thinking about some of those those Colts uh, player prop type of things when I oh. when I was thinking about the week. Pity city. Let's go. Well, Ron, so let's say we're back. Let's say Carson Wentz plays. Would you play Rondell Moore or Michael Pittman? Ooh. If Carson Wentz is playing, Pittman. I think I lean towards Pittman as well. If Carson Wentz is not, then obviously I would go to run. has a, a trouble on the defensive side of the ball. I do lean Pittman for guaranteed workload and snaps, but it's close. Yep. Also, and there's Car no guarantee Carson finishes the game. Carson Wentz has uh, had a really uh, nice recovery um below the knees he you know he's his foot surgery came back really quick oh yeah nice timeline yeah, yeah, yeah. his ankles both of them you think he's got the adamantium lower half just below the knees yeah <laughs> okay all right below. Why is, if it was adamantium it wouldn't break in the first place mm, that's a good point <laughs> <laughs> it's more like it's made out of yeah, rubber. these weren't bullet wounds right <laughs> they're made out of rubber bands and sometimes they just get a little bit overstretched the cardinals have such a high implied point total Are you taking any flex shots with kirk or aj green I, I think you can. I think uh, yeah. if you want – I mean, it's like it, playing uh, Christian Kirk is fine. Playing Henry Ruggs is fine. You just have to know that, you know, it it, it can go either direction. But they are – you know, it's a player that's involved in a high over-under with Chris, talent. Christian Kirk or Tyler Boyd? Christian – well, man, you just said that uh, Higgins, Higgins was going to be doubtful. Be then I, I would probably lean towards Boyd. Okay. 
Uh, outside of Marvin Jones, would you all agree Marvin Jones is the most uh, comfortable start yes. for Jacksonville? Yes. And then uh, James Robinson, look, the game script is challenging if he's not going to get a lot of work. We we bet the uh, – or we buy, bought or sold the 15 touches. Uh, I mean, you, you you play him, but you have to manage your expectations, right? Yeah. He, he, he gives you a baseline? Yeah, I would prefer to not play him for sure, but um, he is someone that you might have to rely on because he's getting the work. If you look at his uh, usage, you know, 73% of the snaps, uh, 85% of the rushing back attempts last week, 60% of the running back targets. It's tough because you need Trevor Lawrence to be better in the offense to do more for James Robinson to be relevant. I don't know that that's going to happen, but at least you're confident in those numbers to have not some kind of a goose performance. James Robinson or Melvin Gordon against the Jets? Melvin Gordon. James Robinson against Arizona or Mike Davis versus the Giants? Mike Davis. Yeah. Okay, and then the last one, James Robinson or Leonard Fournette against Fournette. the Rams? Okay. Wow. Yeah. That was quick and assertive. Fournette has is starting to get a stranglehold on the position. The and New York. I, I just. I, I'm sorry. I was just going to say. And I. And you I wanted hate, to talk more Fournette, which is not expected. Go on. Yeah. I, I just hate that uh, that there's any level of confidence with a. I don't even Arians know who you are anymore, man. Because uh, as soon as we have confidence in a Bruce Arians running back, Fournette just won't be active. Ow. It'll, It'll quick, be the Ronald Jones show. Quick check. Uh, sorry to distract, guys. Has my golden chain shown up? Or not, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, the Jets at the Broncos. 0-2 Jets. 2-0 Broncos. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook line. Broncos minus 10.5. Are they the heaviest favorites of the week? No, probably the Ravens game. Uh, but they're up there. Under Over under is 42 points. That gives, the, that gives the Jets offense 15 points. Let's start there. I'm seeing Broncos as heaviest favorites, but. Are you? Yeah. I thought I the uh, I Ravens were 11. Is that wrong? Nope, they're eight. Yep. So, yeah, the Broncos are the heaviest. Uh, so, I mean, I think there's a compelling argument. The Jets on the road, rookie quarterback, 15.8 implied points to bench everybody. Like, yes. I think there's a fair point to say, don't play a Jet, yes, including Corey Davis, who was two for eight on five targets. Play nobody. I am fine with that strategy. Uh, you you can play Corey Davis, but we've mentioned enough wide receivers on this episode already that are questionable, and I would take all of them over Corey Davis this week. So let's talk about the other side of the ball, the Broncos. I, and, but no other side. But but if Michael Carter's on the waiver wire, stash him and see what the workload looks like this week. That's fair. Yeah, he may have a shot at part of that 15.8 points in weeks in the future. <laughs> Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams, you should play them both. Yeah. It's been a perfect 50-50 timeshare so far. Uh, if you want that breakdown, that's 59% um, of the snaps right now, Gordon, 41% Javante. Week one and two touches, 14-15, 15-14, literally the same. Cortland Sutton is Jason's start of the week. Beyond Sutton, there's a nice 26-point implied point total for the Broncos. Bridgewater can be streamed against the Jets. Yes, can. And you can shoot your shot with Tim Patrick or K.J. Hamler. Um, somebody other than Cortland Sutton will do something in this offense this week. I would guess that it's going to be Noah Fant. That would be great for my fantasy team. <laughs> uh, who do you play this week? In, at uh, Who are you playing against? Oh, you. Okay, yeah. good. Um, fantastic. Noah Fant is Aww. look is Noah Fant a, an every week start at the tight end position. Yeah, I mean, For if the you have future, yeah, when you have Noah Fant on your roster, rosters are established. You don't have Noah Fant and Kittle. Say yes to Noah. Yeah. Say right. yes to mm, Noah. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Look. Okay. I was gonna say we can't all be winners, but. <laughs> Uh, the Miami Dolphins want to I make any joke I want today. <laughs> I'm of immunity. <laughs> uh, the Dolphins are one and one. They're taking on the Los Angeles or the Las Vegas Raiders, who are two and zero. Oh. The DK line here four and a half points for the Raiders at home. Over unders forty four points. We're not going to see Tua. Um, I am very excited to announce that I have recently, as of thirty minutes ago, added. Send in the car. Oh. Send in the car. I've oh. added Derek Carr to my League of Record roster okay. as I have recently made some trades, and I have Justin Herbert. I'm going to put Carr on the old bench 
and see if this continues as he's been a very, very good quarterback. Yes. But I'm going to play Herbert this week, not Derek Carr. And I think you should too. The Dolphins are still a very good defense. I think this line is indicative of that, right? You, you're a home favorite. The Raiders are 2-0 and and you're playing a backup quarterback and you still are only getting four and a half points. You have question marks at running back for the Raiders. You don't know which wide receiver you can trust. So Waller's in. Which sucks because this... Because <laughs> uh, someone's going to do something. Yes, I would say the, the running back matchup here against the Dolphins, <laughs> someone should do something. And I I cannot in good health and good conscience recommend <laughs> starting Peyton Barber should Josh Jacobs be out. But if Josh Jacobs plays, are you just... You're just putting, him, am, putting him in? Yeah, I am playing him. Um, he showed he's willing to limp out of the end zone to the sideline. Yeah, I mean, we, we've we talked about this a lot. When uh, when the Raiders win games, Josh Jacobs pretty much always ends up with a good fantasy day. Their favorite. I oh, would I expect was... them to beat the Dolphins. I'm I'm surprised at the line being uh, only four and a half, as, as you said, the respect that's being given to the Dolphins' defense and maybe a little bit of uh, homage given to the Raiders collapsing when you think that they're not going to. Um I thought for a second, Andy, that you said you were adding – when you said you were adding Carr, I thought you were going to say you're adding another uh, almost upset. And I was I was blown away because I what we saw with the Jacoby Brissett-led Dolphins, and granted he didn't get the practice time, but he's he's been around there. He's been a starter before. Um, man, were they bad. They couldn't do anything against the Bills. And really, I think one of the reasons why the Raiders have the chance to be a different team this year is because their defense is better. They have a better defense, which should stabilize some of these matchups that they, you know, when you have a bottom quarter defense in the league, you lose to bad teams sometimes because you just fail on that side of the football. I think they're better so far this year. They're number 10 against fantasy quarterbacks, um, sixth against fantasy tight ends. If they're giving it up, it's to the running back position. But I'm kind of standing away from the sideline here for the Dolphins. You can flex Miles Gaskin and hope. I'd like to see what happens here. You can seen five targets both. You know, weeks. you can have Will Fuller out there mixing, muddying up targets for Waddle and Parker. Are you starting any wide receivers no for the Dolphins? Way. Okay, no way. Waddle, Parker, Fuller, Gasicki, they, they're all uh, not in the lineup. The Buccaneers at two and zero take on the Los Angeles Rams at two and zero. This is an exciting game. The DK Sportsbook line has the Bucks minus one and a half now. The line has moved. It was the Rams minus one earlier in the week. The over-under in this one is a sweet, sweet, sweet. Mm. So you want pieces in this game. And thus far, while both teams have a have good defenses, they haven't been stoppers. They haven't been full on shut down. You know, 55 is a high over-under in a game where you have two of the top defenses last year in football. So I don't think it has any impact on who you start this week. The fact that they have, you know, each side of the ball has a tough defensive matchup. No, the, it really doesn't because these offenses have been clicking. These quarterbacks are as veteran as it comes. These uh, coaches are great. So I think you're going to start almost everybody um, in this game. Uh, Matthew Stafford is a good start. He's Andy's start of the week. Obviously, you're going to stick with Brady no matter the matchup right now, nine touchdowns through two weeks. Um, I think the one questionable player, the only guy that people are really scared of or worried about, which is Bobby Woods, Robert Woods, um, you know, they're they're disappointed because it's been the Cooper Cup show, Cooper Cup of Coffee. Um, but I think Robert Woods is a good play this week. I, I really do. You're not going to have um, a wide receiver like Cooper Cup of Coffee have two games of complete dominance on film and not have the other team kind of try to try to you eliminate know, that eliminate part. the new normal and Robert Woods is still good a 55 point over under against a team that you cannot run the ball on you can't run on the Bucks every time you face the Bucks every team they just abandon the run because why make a play for no yards. Um, so you throw the ball. So I think Robert Woods is a very good start. Put Tyler Higby back out there. If Agreed. you drafted him, he, he's been in for a hundred percent of snaps in both weeks. One week, more prolific one week, a disappointment, put him back out there in a game with a high over under, um, uh, Al Borland, obviously the start of the week for you is Tony Michelle. Is that right? Not at all. 
Oh, are, you came back. That's, he did, that's he the drop did come of the back, week. though. Are he we, was still dropping. <laughs> are, you, are you playing Sony if Henderson is out? We, he, if he's out, yes. Henderson hasn't practiced yet. We're supposed to get an update today, but we won't know yet. I if he was completely out, I would be willing to flex him. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's in that James Robinson tier to me where um, because he's not a guy that's going to catch the ball, and I uh, just brought it up, you can't really run on this team. Uh, so I would be surprised. Unless you're David Montgomery. Uh, oh, no, wait, that was against the Rams. Sorry. Yeah, I, I don't think that um, you're going to have a lot of fun there. And are you starting Henderson if he's there? Yes, if Henderson is active, okay. I'm starting Henderson. He's He's been great in the receiving game. We're not expecting to see Antonio Brown. He's on the COVID list. If he was, for some reason, active, are you playing him in this game? Sure. Yes, willing to. And then Gronkowski's been incredible. Keep Gronk, keep Gronk, Gronk, Gronk. <laughs> Keep Gronking. I like uh, that you're in. Oh, I'm. it's too, too much fun to be out. Yeah, it just uh, – Every time I hear it, it's like Mike stole Gronk off oh, the well, waiver wire. Here, here, let me under. People might be listening and be like, "Oh, that's so annoying when they do that." And I get it because when Mike does it, oh, it's annoying. The the key, the salve, <laughs> is do it yourself, right? Because then you're like, "Oh, this is fun." Yes, <laughs> Gronk, 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 Look, Gronk. It's more fun than than Tyler Conklin. <laughs> yeah, Although it's, Tyler it's Conklin's Conk. pretty, it's also pretty fun, fun. But it's like, who doesn't like Gronk? I get it that you're maybe you didn't draft him because look. I was, I did not draft Gronk. I drafted uh, um, uh, Irv Smith to put onto my IR spot in the hopes that you know it wasn't season-ending injury, which it was. And then I scrambled, and Gronkowski would just happen to be there. You need to try it before you hate it. Yes. Yep. Right. Yeah. Well said. And uh, that goes for the muth is luth. <laughs> yeah. Try it. Uh, See? Yeah. Yeah. He giggled. Yeah. <laughs> did you think I was out on that? Oh, you just you. I just have to play the straight man, man. That's gold. Oh, okay. That's gold. <laughs> like your hat. <laughs> just like my hat. The Seahawks uh at the Minnesota Vikings. Vikings are 0 2. Seahawks are two point road favorites according to the DK sports book. The over under here again. Oh. Look, I I will be Yes. This is gonna be a game, guys. And I I don't know if Mike Zimmer may strap on a helmet like there there's a point here where he's not going to let them lose another game i think the vikings win this one at home i think dalvin cook gets all the work and more you saw derrick henry drag 11 seahawks behind him for half of the game putting the seahawks at dead last so far through two games in giving up points to the running back you also saw dalvin cook disintegrate the cardinals for about uh, a half of football. Dalvin Cook's going to run wild in this one. He should. Jefferson has 19 targets through two weeks, and Adam Thielen's been great. The real question is, Is are you willing to throw Kirk Cousins out there, and would you put him in over a uh, some of the struggling guys, like Ryan Tannehill or um, Justin Herbert? Would you play Cousins in this home matchup over either of those two guys? I, I think you can, yeah. Um, I can would. Can or would? I, I would. would. I would play him over Tannehill um, in this matchup. Over I, Herbert against the Chiefs? You, no, I think okay. I would stick with Herbert. Russell Wilson is always in your lineup. Chris Carson as well. Metcalf, expecting big things this week from him. 11 targets last week. And Tyler Lockett has been on fire. There really aren't question marks in this game. When you look at up and down both sides, Outside of the Cousins flex or, I guess, uh, streaming question, you know, Mike, you brought up Gerald Everett with the target totals. He's a good DFS play maybe. Um, anything you want to talk about here? Minnesota has nope. been giving up a lot of touchdowns in big games to wide receivers, so Metcalf and Lockett should be yep. stay on Getting track. On that. Sunday night football, Packers 49ers. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook line, 49ers minus three, over under is 50. I'm 50. <laughs> and uh, I can kick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will I'll never be able to say 50 without thinking of that. It was uh, Molly Shannon, right? That is. Yeah. 49ers implied point totals 26 and a half. Packers 23. One, are you surprised the 49ers are three-point favorites in this one? And two, you know, there are a lot of questions up and down the 49ers offense. So where do you where do you go? I mean, Debo is in your lineup, but there's not a lot of of 49ers that you can feel comfy with. No, there's not. Um, I I think with the hodgepodge of 
injuries at running back. Andy, your start of the week and George Kittle, anyone who has Kittle is starting them, but I think you, you should have confidence in this matchup. The, the Packers so far on the season have been roasted, uh, you know, by tight ends. So I, I think Kittle should be fine. Um, I don't believe you could start Jimmy Garoppolo or Trey Lance. We've talked through the running backs already. If you skipped ahead, you can go back and listen to kind of in the news segment, uh, all the Elijah Mitchell versus Trey Sermon versus mm -hmm. Jack Quez Patrick or, or, or what to do in and those. Trent Cannon. Yeah, in those situations. Um, so really it's just Debo Samuel, and that's that's it, Debo and Debo and Kittle. Obviously the Packers, there's a lot of questions um, or a lot of a lot of options to play. Um, you're starting Aaron Rodgers. You're starting Aaron Jones. You're starting Devontae Adams. How have you felt about Robert Tunyon so far through two games? He had a big week last week with the touchdown. Didn't do much in week one, but they were they were just melted. I think you got to feel good. Uh, Tunyon or Fant rest of the season? Fant. Fant. Okay. So yeah. you don't – I mean, Tunyon was a very high – or not a very high, but a higher draft pick than Fant was. Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is uh, we, we know that Tunyon has the ceiling if, if Rodgers is going to throw a ton of touchdowns. He was the tight end three last year, but it was completely on the back of touchdowns, and that's not a sticky predictive stat. So I would rather have the targets yeah. and the receptions, which don't really come towards but, Tunyon. And I mean, the, the, yeah, the way it went, no offense, like Jerry Judy's out. I mean, that's that's the difference here between the two guys. If Judy was still there, I would go Tony. That's a, that's a good point. Um, changing perspective on Fant is what does that. Yes. Breaking news. Mike, why don't you share this breaking news with us? Yeah, this is, this is positive. So uh, Rappaport just tweeted out, Christian McCaffrey expected to miss a few weeks. The team is still running tests. But as of now, IR is not the plan. So that has to at least... Let's go to our raise, local CMC Raise some spirits if Chris McCaffrey is on your team that they didn't immediately throw him on the IR. All, he does mention that Chuba Hubbard is the next man up, which we already knew. How do you uh, feel about that, Jay? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it is positive that he's not going on the IR. That's the thing I said we were waiting to find out. Um, so you, I, I assume two weeks. You've got to. Well, it's not the plan right now. It's not the plan right now. Sure, they could add uh, him plans to get IR. Crazy. <laughs> you know how plans be. <laughs> well, the way um, they made the decision for him to be out last night was so fast that you got to take some solace in the fact it wasn't that fast right now. I like Matt Rule. Matt Ja Rule. Oh, murder. <laughs> um, ja Rule's been a I think very they're going to be coach. five and zero. Oh, by the way, have you seen Do their schedule? You? I'm concerned. Well, about they, uh, them. losing J C Horn and losing yes. Christian McCaffrey. Two of your best players on, uh, you know, on each side of the ball is very, very difficult for the outlook going forward uh, on this team. But they they do look legit, and I think they're well coached. But my point in talking about the coach is that they are going. He's smart enough to know not to rush him back. He's not Matt Rule is not uh, coaching for his job security. He right. is a new coach on a rebuilding plan with a massive long-term contract. I take it he back. Wants, They're going to lose next week. He wants Christian McCaffrey healthy, <laughs> mm -hmm. and even if they lose next week or whatever, they're three and zero already. So this is a team that has the luxury of saying, "Get healthy, Christian McCaffrey, and then we'll let you back." And I, I, I do wonder if when he comes back, at this point, do you start to manage can, him a little more? Do you start to manage him? Start to make him more of a not 75%? if Chuba drops touchdown passes. You don't, you know, snap yeah. player. And uh, we didn't even really talk about that. Like Chuba looked fine, fine, fine. Where maybe a it, little scared, and it, I guess we'll get into that in the waivers. But like Royce Freeman was the the second man up. It was clearly the touches went to Chuba, uh, but Royce Freeman is going to be interesting. <laughs> It's that was hard my best to, attempt it's at hard to do the, the because oh. uh, I get it, <laughs> no. Chuba's tuba, but he's a speedster. <laughs> yeah, like, he, he's not Joyke Bell. No, I, we just need to change it to Chuba. And and people well, would no, say, yeah. you can't change his but name. Chuba Hubbard. <laughs> I know. That's so cool. I know. It's Chuba Hubbard. <laughs> Chuba Hubbard. <laughs> uh, AJ Dillon. A lot of people have dropped him. He's another guy that fits into the category like Chuba, where if he is on your waiver, just pick him up for the weekend. To me, AJ, I, I talked about James Conner. Do you or do you not stash him? A.J. Dillon should not be on waiver wires to me. In, in the event... Upper tier back of yeah, where he should like, be rostered. If Jones unfortunately misses time, A.J. Dillon will smash. This isn't you might like, see some Kylan Hill, though, man. Yeah, You might. Yeah. Yeah, you, you certainly might, but I, I think that, that A.J. Dillon will 
become a top 15 running back immediately. You cannot confidently start a non Devontae Adams wide receiver, no. but reports this morning is that Randall Cobb is going to continue to get worked into this offense. They want to get him the ball more. Pay attention to that. Again, Don't care. That's fine. That's fine. He could, he could enter <laughs> Sterling Shepard category eventually here. Uh, the Eagles take on the Cowboys on Monday night football. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Cowboys minus three and a half. The over-under is 52.5. Jason, you have three players in this matchup, in our league of record matchup. So we're, I'm going to try to build a lead against you, and you're going to try to come back on Monday night football, and then I, and you're going to be unsuccessful, and then I'll be victorious. But you, you kind of went through this process with Jalen Hurts in the office yesterday where you were looking at the waiver wire. You were, you were trying to be fair-minded about Hurts and say, well, I shouldn't consider him in every week start. I should find streaming options and better matchups in case I want to bench Jalen Hurts. And where did you get to on that journey? Where I landed looking at the schedule and what's ahead and what he's done is that he is pretty much an every week starter. He is. To um, me. I, I don't see a matchup in the near future. And when I say near, like the next two months um, where I would not start him, he uh, has been very, very good for fantasy, and he now has six starts. In those six starts, he's averaged 8.9 fantasy points per game on the ground, which in, delightful. Which includes fumbles. For context, Lamar, uh, Lamar Jackson averages 9.8 on the ground in 39 starts, so he is in the same realm as a running back as Lamar Jackson, but he is a much better passer, in my opinion. Um, I think that if you want to... I mean, you you can, judge can hit the gavel for that one. Third can, highest grade to passer against the blitz right now. Yeah, I mean, okay. uh, you know that that's just not a fair thing to say. I think about Jalen Hurts seven games into his career. Like I think Lamar is a good passer, but yeah, you can continue. To to be fair to what my thought was is not so much who is able to throw a more accurate ball, but who is going to be utilized more in the passing game for fantasy. Who out of Lamar Jackson and Jalen Hurts are going to have a 300-yard passing game in the volume, and that's where I Neither. think that's where I think it would be <laughs> more on the Jalen Hurts side. So you take Hurts over Lamar rest of the season? Um, I would not take Hurts over Lamar. He's still got the point fewer on the uh, the rushing on the baseline, um, but I see them darn near identical. It is funny that uh, last year in four career starts, Jalen Hurts surpassed 300 passing yards twice. <laughs> Yeah, he's also under Lamar this year. I mean, he had 190 in his last game, and it shows yep. you where it can go. Um, but that's I mean, it's fair. I mean, you have to kind of decide what you believe there. And early in the offseason when they hadn't drafted Devonta Smith or brought Zach Ertz back, it was hard to see where the targets could go. Um, but it's nice that he can pass for 190 yards and no touchdowns and give you an okay fantasy week. Yep, he was still fine. I am uh, extremely. Um, he had the rushing touchdown. Interested in watching the Cowboys defense this week because Tom Brady carved him up, made him look like what we thought they were, which was terrible. And then last week they were actually better than expected against the Chargers, uh, who is a good offense in their own right. So I'm I'm curious to see if uh, anything has been fixed with the Dallas Cowboys defense or. Preferably, would you like that to they jump come in out? My time machine. Oh Jason? yes, please. <laughs> it has not. Fantastic. <laughs> I think the Cowboys win and cover in this game. Now, Jason, you went the other direction on some of your picks this week. I think the Cowboys mop the floor with the Eagles this week. Yeah, I, I, I took the just Eagles like the with Chiefs mop the floor last week with the Ravens. So, <laughs> you want to enter that time machine, Mike? Can we go back in time in this time machine and uh, fix nope. something we said on the show? Nope. All right, uh, question marks in this game, though. Miles Sanders, you're playing him. Zeke, yes. Pollard, back in the lineup. In your flex. Uh, Amari Cooper? Yes. C.D. Lamb? Yep. Devonta Smith? Yep. Dallas Goddard or Zach Ertz? Goddard. Jalen Rager is a desperation play? Yep. Okay. And you're still stashing Kenny Gamewell. I'm looking forward to this yes. segment right now, right here. Mm -hmm. Fantasy Face-Off, presented by DraftKings. Oh, how the turntables. Freaking Amari Cooper. <laughs> the, last uh, week. The chicken mask shall not be worn by yours truly. Last week's head-to-head-to-head -to -head -to -head matchup on DraftKings, I came out on top. Jason was second and third place and <laughs> biggest loser this week. Mike the Fantasy Hitman himself 
which means Mike gets to spin the wheel of shame today. Before we reveal our week three lineups, you get to... Well, you got to hit the button. What button? Yeah. Wheel of shame. Yeah, get hyped on the drop before you get dropped yes. by the wheel. Yes. All right, spin it. Let's find out, uh, those of you listening, uh, what see. Mike's situation Not is going the fedora, to be. Not the mullet wig. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Messy lipstick. Messy lipstick for today's <sighs> show. All right. Pucker up. Where's J.D. McKissick when you need him? So this is not, you can't be polished on this. You need to be nice. At least it's matte. And matte and red and messy. Mm, nice right. red lips. Go ahead and uh, yeah, get, get this. Yeah. Get, get the, the camera get on Get up there. in there. Oh, We're talking clown it's level. A little, <laughs> it's a little messy. You got to get a little messier. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That, is, that looks nice. Nice and disturbing. Oh, oh that is te- that is horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look, my, Because of the beard. Because my, of the beard, it, it looks just A terrifying. little too intentional. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, you look good, Mike. Uh, let's keep the camera there as long as we can. Why don't you, uh, <laughs> Mike's, Mike? I can't handle myself. You get paid to do this. Oh, uh, Big hold cat. on, hold on. I'm gonna get a little bit more on that top lip. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Ooh, proceed. Looking very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way that you're talking right now with your lips puckered the whole time. You got to give the duck face. Mm-hmm. Week three. Um. Oh gosh, I can't look at this. I can't look at this man. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> look at good. This Mike. is the best camera here. The three. The three. Go to YouTube.com. Check out uh, Mike. Mike, who's your quarterback this week on DraftKings? Oh, I forgot. I have to give a lineup. Yeah. Head to head to head. We'll see if what you're in next. All week. right. Uh, uh, at the quarterback position. Uh. I I want in on that Minnesota game, but the other side, I'm taking Russell Wilson at 7,600. 7,600 Russell Wilson. Mike, uh, Jason, what do you have? This is my fear. I, I, I worried about my lineup because of my quarterback pick. I went with a, a very cheap option in Justin Fields. Um, I don't mind it. He was only 5,200, but I do worry that the quarterback position is going to be my downfall this week. <laughs> uh, here's a quick question, Mike. First time? With the lipstick? Yeah. I, no, no comment? I plead the first, fifth. First time today. <laughs> I went with Josh Allen at the quarterback position this week. I think 7,000 is a, a low point for Josh Allen this year. Yeah. He's at home against Washington. Okay. He's still putting he's put more, he's put more on. He likes um, it. Running backs, Mike, who do you got at the running back position? Uh, <laughs> at the running back position, I'm buying in on that uh, 6,500 price for Saquon Barkley. Oh, nice. Taking on the Atlanta Falcons. And uh, to pay up for some players later, I had to find a little bit of a value at the running back position. So I'm going with the rookie, Javante Williams, oh, at 4,900 against the New York Jets. Jason, your running backs. At running backs, I got the value in field, so I was able to get Dalvin Cook into the lineup. And I am pairing him with my guy, who is only 4,800, Clyde edwards Lair. Oh! I know he has stunk, but uh, at that price tag, he doesn't have to do much. My running backs are Derrick Henry at 8,600 and Austin Eckler at 7,200. Okay, okay. So I spent up on both Eckler and the Chiefs matchup, Henry against the Colts. Interesting. Now, what wide receivers could you guys get? Well, let's find out. Mike, right. your, your wide outs? Uh, I'm stacking Mr. Russ Wilson, Mr. Unlimited. Yeah. Yep. Going with DK Metcalf uh, simply because he was $100 fewer. and I Cheaper. Or cheaper, yeah. Thank you. Uh, then Tyler Lockett and... Maybe the variance bounces towards Metcalf this week. I love it. Chris Godwin with the potential that Antonio Brown is out. And Chris Godwin is also just – he's the guy. This is where your money went. These for Tom Brady. Receivers. And then I'm taking the deep shot. I'm buying the air yards. I hope they hit this year. I'm taking Emmanuel Sanders at 4,200 against mm-hmm. Washington. I have Emmanuel Sanders as well okay. for 4,200. You I have <laughs> That's a trifecta of Me Sanders. Me too. Okay, so yeah. we all see Emmanuel Sanders as a good value mm. this week. I also have another value in Darnell Mooney. I have the oh, stack with okay. my Justin Fields. So this is going to be that's where, a, I'm, that's a, where that's I'm living a, and dying uh, is, is Justin Fields' Darnell Mooney. My third wide receiver, and really my number one wide receiver, is Keenan Allen. 
Well, if he throws to someone else, uh, you'll be displeased. I have Allen Robinson at 6,200. I felt like that was, again, basement level for him. Marvin Jones at 4,900 and Emmanuel Sanders at 4,200. Your tight end and your flex, Mike. Uh, so and, the, and give me your defense, too. Just okay, round out your lineup. The tight end, I'll kind of be shocked if we're not all, or at least one of you is not on this. I'm going with Hawkinson at 5,200. I don't. Maybe you couldn't afford him. Uh, but Hawkinson, and then this is where I didn't love it because I'm pairing two Lions, but I have DeAndre Swift at 5,800. That with that with that PPR against Baltimore, I think that he's going to be uh, a good play. And then I had to save some quiche. So I got the Titans They're at 2,400, good... which after, it's not the, looking as good after the news of Carson Wentz, I'm not, not as confident. Um, I have Hawkinson as well, uh, Mike, but not I've... at tight end. I have Ooh. Hawkinson at my flex. I think at 5,200, he's just a good value. I hope you have a real cheap tight end. I have tight end a guy named Travis Kelsey okay. at tight end. I figured no Christian McCaffrey this week. I'm going to go with the guy who is tied with him nine games in a row of 20-point-plus performances. And I have the Arizona Cardinals yeah. at defense against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Was that 3,000 for the Cardinals? It was. Yeah. I went with Austin Hooper at the tight end position at 3,600. Hooper may be really necessary this week. Uh, I've got Clyde because Clyde's priced at a point that's just ridiculous mm -hmm. at 4,800. And I went with the Raiders defense against Jacoby Brissett. 3,400 oh, yeah. 3, for the Raiders. We'll find out who's spinning the wheel of shame. And you can download. I the, hope it's me again. I've enjoyed my time. Yeah, the, the in the lipstick. What's the review of the re, the wheel of shame? Uh, two out of two lips. Two out of two <laughs> lips. Uh, <laughs> download the DraftKings app now. Use the code Ballers this week. New customers can get a free shot at a million uh, at millions of dollars in total prizes. That's the code Ballers only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. That is a minimum five dollar deposit required. Eligibility restrictions do apply. You can see DraftKings.com for details there. Again, use the code BALLERS and get the DraftKings app. We'll come back next week and find out who wins in week three. And we're going to keep track all year long and figure out what the – maybe we'll spin a brand new, more significant wheel of shame at the end of the year we'll see. for that final prize. I think we just finished the show, Brooks. Um, I guess uh, – can I uh, – do I get like a special entry in your country club or anything like that after I've come into this new money? We'll see about that. Okay. You think you have money. Yeah, I don't have Brooks did we, money. Did you mention – I was uh, too busy looking at my lips. Did you mention the DFS podcast? Well, I, I highly recommend that. Uh, the Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast with Kyle the Borgogan and Matthew Betts. They have done an incredible job building up our DFS side of the company, which we now get to participate in, and three weeks in – have had the good fortune of bringing home mm -hmm. a Millie Maker title for the brand. So check that out. And uh, like I said, I'm going to do some special stuff this week on social media. And you can check Mike out Sunday live. He will probably not be wearing lipstick. I don't make any guarantees. That's BallersLive.com. <laughs> Boy, you and JD McKissick this week, huh? Oh. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.